On August 20th, NBC and MSNBC published what they called an investigative report and dedicated hours of television screen time, including The Rachel Maddow Show, to attacking the Epoch Times. These spread misinformation and outright falsehoods and led to a series of other media reports that did the same. What was this, what amounts to a disinformation campaign, all about? How does it egregiously misrepresent the Epoch Times? How does it play to Chinese Communist Party propaganda talking points about a group that has been severely persecuted by the Chinese regime for the last 20 years? This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Jan Jekielek. Today we sit down with Stephen Gregory, publisher of the U.S. editions of the Epoch Times, to set the record straight. Stephen Gregory, excellent to have you on American Thought Leaders. It's great to be here, Jan. So Stephen, tell me, what's going on here? What's going on is that first NBC News and then MSNBC have issued a series of hit pieces attacking the Epoch Times. And uh, we need to get out the facts about this. Uh, this is an issue that involves the freedom of the press. And I think everyone in the nation needs to be informed about it and understand what's happening. Because it involves not just the Epoch Times and not just the complaints that NBC has reported about us, but it involves issues and trends that go deep in our country and affect the possibility of there being a free press in this country. That's a big thing to say, Stephen. Can you break it down for us a little bit? Well, let's start with what these reports were about. The NBC headline uh, was that uh, the NBC headline was that the Epoch Times had bought more pro-Trump ads than anyone else other than the Trump campaign. Uh, this is a gross misrepresentation of our, in fact, purchasing subscription ads through Facebook. Uh, these ads, typically they're videos, lively videos, uh, that promote uh, our most recent and outstanding articles, uh, not just political, but cultural coverage, social coverage. And uh, because we have been covering Spygate, the uh, attempt to, by certain Obama administration officials, to undo the Trump presidency, um, because we've been covering Spygate heavily, of course, uh, we're promoting this. Readers are very interested in our coverage of this because they're not hearing it from other media. And of course, this involves President Trump. And so NBC has labeled our subscription ads as, uh, uh, as pro-Trump ads. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. This, these are simply ads that are meant to bring readers to us. And they've been very successful. Uh, the subscription campaign has been very popular. And uh, that is part of the reason, I believe, why NBC felt they wanted to attack us, because, because of the very success that we've been having. Well, I noticed that Rachel Maddow actually described Spygate as something, uh, gosh, I can't even remember exactly what she said, but she basically dismissed it completely as some kind of conspiracy theory and tried to tie it to some other actual conspiracy theory uh, entertainment content. Right. Well, this, again, uh, is, uh, uh, this again is a false charge by NBC uh, and a gross misrepresentation. Um, NBC for two years uh, pushed the conspiracy theory that President Trump and his aides had conspired with uh, uh, Russia to undo, to, to affect the outcome of the 2016 election. Um, Informed observers knew very quickly there was nothing to this charge. Uh, but, uh, and we reported, uh, uh, the Epoch Times has reported, in fact, that uh, uh, what really happened was an actual conspiracy among members of the Obama administration, holdovers that served in the Trump administration, to attempt to tar Trump with this, uh, uh, this supposed conspiracy to work with Russia. So, what Rachel Maddow said about our coverage stands the truth on its head, that uh, we're reporting the facts, they were reporting a made-up conspiracy theory, and they've never acknowledged that they got that story wrong. They've lost a huge number of, huge number of viewers because once viewers realized that they'd been lied to for two years by NBC, uh, they began turning their TVs off, going to other channels, as one might expect. 
So, uh, yes, uh, uh, Maddow accuses us of being a conspiracy theory. In fact, they're the ones who were airing a conspiracy theory. So, and what do you make of this um, uh, conflation of the Epic Times content with uh, um, other unrelated content <laughs> and entertainment content? Well, what MSNBC is doing is they're reaching for anything, they, any tool they can use to try to discredit us. Um, there, is an, uh, there is a YouTube show called Edge of Wonder. Uh, it is produced by two former employees of the Epoch Times, and it is a show about the most far out conspiracies. It's an entertainment show. Uh, it has nothing to do with the Epoch Times. They left our employee. Um, they used New Tongue Dynasty Studios to do their programming. Um, uh, New Tongue Dynasty is a sister company of the Epoch Times, Empire Epoch Media Group. Uh, but we have no responsibility for what Edge of Wonder produces. We have no connection with it. Uh, but what Maddow did was go through and report on some of the most outrageous conspiracies that Edge of Wonder had aired, and then wanted to represent that as though that was, uh, that was what the Epoch Times reporting was about. Uh, this, is, this is propaganda. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is low level propaganda. And uh, uh, of course, the, the intent, as I said, is simply to discredit the Epoch Times. Stephen, what is the relationship between Falun Gong and the Epoch Times? Our founders, which this is in our About Us, it's in videos we produced, uh, uh, the founders of the Epoch Times uh, were practitioners of Falun Gong. They are practitioners of Falun Gong. And uh, they were moved to found the Epoch Times uh, in order to uh, respond to the persecution of Falun Gong in China and human rights issues in China generally. They wanted to bring to the Chinese people the benefits of a free press. Um, our, our, uh, our, our founder, John Tong, was at the time uh, doing, a theoretical, doing a postdoc in theoretical physics at Georgia Tech. Uh, he had family and friends in China who were being uh, directly affected by the persecution, and he wanted to do something to help. He'd lived in the United States, he'd experienced what it meant to have a free press, and so he wanted to bring a free press to China. And that was the beginning of the Epoch Times. There, there was a cost to that. Uh, the reporters uh, in China, they, you know, suffered immediate retribution once they were discovered. We started in the summer of 2000, and initially we had several bureaus in China, bureaus of reporters, operating secretly. Um, but Perhaps we were too optimistic about the ability to maintain that. Uh, in the fall of 2000, when a matter of a couple of days, uh, all of these bureaus were rolled up, all the reporters were arrested, uh, several served uh, long prison terms and suffered uh, uh, you know, terribly. I mean, they were very badly mistreated. Uh, there were one, of our, one of our senior editors, a, a young man of 35, uh, when he was arrested, his son was three years old. And uh, in part of his uh, torture, he was hung on a cross for days. And when his son came to visit him two years after he had been detained, imprisoned, uh, his hair had turned white. His face was riven with, with wrinkles. Uh, his son took one look at him and screamed and ran away and said, you're not my father. Uh, so this is just one example of uh, uh, the terrible suffering inflicted on these, uh, on, on these reporters. Um, but at the same time, here in the United States uh, and around the world, the Chinese Communist Party was trying everything they could to shut us down. Uh, advertisers, uh, advertisers would receive phone calls from the consulate letting them know they shouldn't be advertising with us. Uh, uh, staff members who were Chinese, who had family in China, uh, they would receive threats in China from, uh, the family members in China would receive threats because they're, they had uh, individuals outside who were working for the Epoch Times. Uh, we've had a number of instances of uh, newspapers being stolen or destroyed, uh, a long list of things. We testified in 2005 to Congress about, about this. Uh, and so this has been uh, the incident with NBC News, in my mind, occurs in this context. It's the context of the uh, Chinese Communist Party's attempts to, to stamp out uh, uh, or to eliminate or restrict, <laughs> defeat <laughs> uh, the Epoch Times. Um, 
I'm not saying that Rachel Maddow or uh, Brandy Zajosny or Ben Collins, the authors of the NBC reports, uh, sat down with Communist Party officials and said, why don't you go get the Epoch Times? Um, of course, the Communist Party is much more subtle than that, but they work very hard to affect media in this country. They're constantly working to spread disinformation in this country and to subvert independent media in this country. It so happens that NBC Universal has a multi-billion project going on in Beijing right now. And uh, Comcast, the parent company of NBC, uh, broadcasts China's propaganda TV network, CCTV. The way the Communist Party works, when they enter into relations with a company, they then leverage those relations. And so it would be very surprising to me if the CCP uh, was not at least applauding, if not urging NBC to, to run attacks on the Epoch Times, because we've always been their number one target. We're the ones who have uh, exposed uh, uh, most deeply and comprehensively uh, the truth about the Chinese Communist regime in China and how it's affecting the United States, how it's affecting the rest of the world. Uh, and so uh, the Chinese Communist Party has uh, uh, good reasons for wanting to see the Epoch Times be attacked. Stephen, you know, as a China watcher for mm -hmm. many, many years, um, I was very disturbed by how uh, Rachel Maddow described uh, the relationship between the Chinese Communist Party and Falun Gong as a brawl. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Well, um, the word brawl is loaded. And it puts, the, it puts the relationship between Falun Gong and the Chinese Communist Party in the wrong context. It gives viewers who may not be aware of this uh, a, the wrong frame of reference for understanding what's going on. Uh, Falun Gong is a spiritual practice, a peaceful spiritual practice. And in 1999, the Chinese Communist Party, which feared how many people were practicing Falun Gong, uh, which feared that it might, its teachings might be more popular than the uh, dogma of the Communist Party, uh, began persecuting it, severely persecuting Falun Gong. And so what Maddow was describing as a brawl, as though we have two contestants fighting each other, was in fact uh, a vicious regime uh, trying to uh, eliminate uh, a peaceful spiritual practice. And uh, that she would frame it in this way uh, is very concerning because it misleads people about one of the greatest uh, human rights catastrophes in the world today and also something that I believe is key to understanding China today. There were, uh, according to uh, uh, news reports, there were in 1999, there were 100 million people practicing Falun Gong. That's one in 13. When you consider that each of those individuals have family, colleagues, co-workers, that's a huge proportion of the uh, population of China directly affected by this attempt by the Communist Party to eradicate this practice. And uh, we have learned over the last 13 years that uh, not only have they been detaining by the hundreds of thousands Falun Gong practitioners, torturing them, in many cases torturing them to death, but they have been harvesting their organs. And uh, an international tribune in June, um, composed not of Falun Gong practitioners but outside experts, found that uh, this organ harvesting was very significant, was ongoing. Huge numbers of Falun Gong practitioners have been killed in order to fuel this industry. And that Maddow would not make any mention of this atrocity. Uh, it's, it's a little incomprehensible. Indeed, actually, U.S. Congress in 2016 unanimously passed a resolution condemning this organ harvesting as well. I mean, it's, 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 it's a highly documented thing. You know, Stephen, the, the thing about all this, and, and what you're saying makes, makes a lot of sense to me, the thing about this that always, that puzzles me um, uh, is the folks that are doing the writing, you know, Rachel Maddow on her show and some of the other shows that also uh, uh, you know, basically featured these stories and these reporters, they seem to be, you know, very convinced, for example, that this whole Spygate thing is a conspiracy theory. Like, I, I get the sense, they're, I don't think they're acting, I think they, they believe it mm -hmm. at a deeper level. I, I, g despite this preponderance of evidence <laughs> that exists, right? Yeah. Uh, how does this work in your mind? 
Well, um, one thing I should say, one thing I should say about Rachel Maddow and, and the others involved in this, um, I think that fundamentally uh, these reporters are, are misinformed. Uh, and we'll talk about why, how that could happen in, in just a second. But um, our purpose in, in exposing the errors in these reports, we're not seeking to fight with NBC. We're not seeking to fight with MSNBC. We're not seeking to fight with these individuals. Um, we want in this to deal with these individuals, these institutions, with compassion. But at the same time, we have to let people know what the facts are. Very serious things were said that are false about the Epoch Times, and we have to correct the record. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. Now, with that as a long preface, um, you, you, you had on American Thought Leader a few weeks ago a very interesting interview with Kerry Sheffield, the founder of uh, a new media, Bold Media. And according to Sheffield, um, the elite in this country live in a bubble that uh, they live in the same select zip codes, they go to the same schools, and they have lost connection with, uh, uh, with the vast swath of middle America. Uh, but this is what Charles Murray, in, in, a, in a wonderful book, Coming Apart, uh, laid out in book length, that uh, we have an insulated elite now like we've never had before. It has a class consciousness. And uh, these individuals of this group tend to think alike. They tend to have the same views about everything, and they tend to be insulated from what the rest, from what the rest of the country is thinking and feeling. And uh, uh, you know, reporters who may not themselves have grown up in these in elite circumstances want to identify with that group. They look up to that group, and they want to be part of it. And this is what Sheffield is, has noticed in her own reporting and what's going on with this country. So it's possible that uh, the staff at NBC do believe that uh, our reporting, our factually based reporting, uh, is, um, uh, uh, is a conspiracy, that it's something that we made up. And you know they've held very stubbornly and refused to acknowledge that their reporting on, on Russiagate, which charged President Trump and, and his aides with conspiring with, with Russia, uh, was false, and there's no evidence for it. And so um, this, you know, this theory of the bubble, <laughs> I think, does more to explain the behavior of a lot of journalists today than, than anything else that I know of. And I think that it certainly would play a role with, uh, NP, in, with NBC's stance towards Spygate and its stance to us generally, that uh, they're not prepared, in my view, based on you know, what Sheffield has observed, Murray has observed, uh, they're not prepared to, um, uh, to be open to points of view that come, uh, come outside of their accepted, uh, accepted narratives. They're, they're wedded to those narratives as part of their class consciousness. So Stephen, do the political beliefs of NBC or its staff and executive impact how they report on the Epic Times in your view? Yeah, for sure. And um, you know, there have been several studies done of um, NBC's content since Trump was elected. And they have consistently shown that over 90% of their articles are negative on President Donald Trump. 90, over 90%. I mean, this is not... This is not an accident. This is, uh, this is a, a very firm point of view that they have been, uh, they have been reporting uh, consistently, that they're opposed to President Trump. Um, Sheffield says uh, that, that, uh, uh, that the mainstream media are, uh, are in collusion with the Democratic Party, that the real collusion story is of some, an outlet like, outlet like NBC with the Democratic Party advancing the Democratic Party agenda rather than the supposed collusion of Trump with Russia. That the real collusion, what has been going on now for, se for some time, is a wedding between uh, the Democratic Party and uh, the mainstream media. Uh, Mark Levin, in a wonderful book, Unfreedom of the Press, lays this out in book length and explains uh, the roots of this. Uh, how it differs from the tradition of American journalism and how this is a threat to the possibility of our having a free republic. And 
Levin points to progressivism, which is the uh, ideology which lies behind the Democratic Party as, uh, uh, as being uh, the, the soul, as it were, of the Democratic Party and of the media that are working with the Democratic Party. Now, uh, you can ha get a quick introduction to progressivism by looking at a book by Saul Alinsky called Rules for Radicals. His hero was Machiavelli. His book was, uh, the epigraph was dedicated to the devil, uh, I'm sure with uh, some sense of humor. But uh, Machiavelli was interested in using truth as a weapon. He was interested in, in the, what he called the effective truth of the matter. And uh, uh, Alinsky has, you know, very clearly lays out that uh, a progressive only uses words and arguments and narratives in order to seize power. They have no, they have no fidelity to the truth. Now, I'm not charging these NBC journalists with being these soulless zealots who have, uh, you know, no sense of, um, no sense of right or wrong or only want power. But I do believe that Levin has a, an important point, that, that this ideology which points politicians and journalists, uh, uh, scholars, to uh, believing in the rightness of their goals so much so that they, uh, you know, can say whatever is needed in order to reach those goals, that this does have an effect on on how the media think, how they cover President Trump. And when the Epoch Times comes along and reports honestly on President Trump, reports the facts about his administration, about you know, its, its uh, successes, uh, its the tremendous economy that it's achieved, um, you know, why the appointment of constitutionally minded judges is, is an important corrective to uh, you know, a system that was uh, uh, losing the ability to uphold uh, law and order, uh, about uh, you know, the re reasons behind Trump's policies on the border, not a caricature of those policies, you know, which the media have often carried, but you know, the actual problems that you know, we're dealing with as a country with, with an open border, an open southern border. When we report about these issues factually, we are a great threat to, to uh, NBC and others who've bought into uh, uh, the counter narratives which want to hold Trump which want to treat Trump as though he's some kind of criminal, frankly. So uh, this is, you know, in talking in broad strokes like this, uh, this is a complicated issue. The connection between ideology and, uh, and, and what appears in, on NBC News every day. But uh, I, I, I do think that the progressive ideology uh, influences, and not in a good way, uh, what NBC produces, and it has led them to, to want to attack us. So what does the Epic Times then stand for, Stephen? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the Epic Times seeks to restore, uh, restore traditional journalism. It seeks to restore honest journalism. Uh, our motto is truth and tradition. Uh, we want to provide readers with, the, uh, uh, with honest, truthful reporting about the important events of the day. And we do so from the perspective of our healthy traditions that, you know, we believe, for instance, that uh, the founding fathers of this country uh, gave the world a great gift in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, the, 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 the governing system that they set up. And uh, we at the Epoch Times support that and want to protect that. Um, you know, we, uh, we believe in personal responsibility. We believe in the importance of family. And so in our, uh, our writings, we're trying, in our reporting, uh, we're trying to bring out um, the traditional elements in society that uh, uh, help make us, uh, uh, that can lead, lead us to have a healthy, healthy country and a healthy nation. Um, now, what I would say about, now about the, um, uh, attack by NBC on the Epoch Times. Um, if we can be silenced by false attacks that attempt to provide us with commercial opportunities, you know, through Facebook and otherwise, to develop our media, then this is an attack on the free press itself. Uh, the vindication of the free press, in my view, 
is the ability to deliver to the people uh, honest factual reporting. And we offer a clear alternative to many in the media by doing that. Uh, if we can be silenced, then the case for the free press in the United States uh, is lost. Uh, I would call upon uh, uh, everyone to, uh, first of all, contact NBC and ask them to correct the record, to uh, correct the many misrepresentations and falsehoods they broadcast about us, uh, slandered us. And I would also ask them to contact Facebook and ask Facebook to uh, uh, reverse this decision to, uh, to ban our subscription ads. Uh, this is, uh, they've never given uh, a clear reason to us for why that decision was reached. And uh, I think people in the United States should contact Facebook and ask them, uh, uh, demand of them that they reverse this decision. Stephen Gregory, thank you very much. Thank you.